right, we've got a championship game for you inside the WAC. The sixth seed, the Wildcats of Abilene Christian taking on the number one seed. They've been the power in this conference over the last many years, and lots of Aggies fans are here. New Mexico State. New Mexico State had to buy all the way into the semifinals, took down Grand Canyon. Meanwhile, Abilene Christian's already won three games in this WAC tournament. They've got to win a fourth to win this championship tonight and make it into the NCAA tournament. Hi, everybody. Dave Fleming alongside Mike O'Donnell. Great to have you with us. We love these kind of games because as good of a year as it's been in the WAC, and it's been a really good year in this conference, it's a one big league. So whoever wins tonight gets a chance to play in the NCAA tournament. On top of all that drama and pressure, we get a terrific matchup and a total contrast in styles. Two teams of great winning cultures and defense. New Mexico State, they want to force you to take bad shots. Abilene Christian, they are pesky. They want to pick your pocket every chance they can get. And we mentioned that Abilene Christian has had to run the gauntlet already. I mean, it's really a remarkable story. Inside this uh, WAC Conference Championship, Abilene Christian has had to win three games in three nights, the seventh seed. They took down the third seed, the second seed. Now tonight trying to do it to the top seed, New Mexico State. No team has ever done that in the history of the WAC, beating number three, number two, and number one in route to a championship. And if they're going to do it, they got to handle this guy. The player of the year in the WAC, Teddy Allen's had a terrific year for the Yankees. And look what he did to Abilene Christian last time they played. Dropped 41 points in that matchup. They call him Teddy Buckets for a reason. He's a three-level scorer. Never met a shot that he didn't like. Big time score nationally. So the 41 is career high. It matched his career high for Teddy Allen, who has found a home in Las Cruces and has become one of the top scorers in all of college basketball. New Mexico State has played in 10 consecutive WAC championship games. So they're used to being here. Their fans are used to being here. Abilene Christian, meanwhile, if you recall, last year out of the Southland, in the NCAA tournament as a 14 seed beat third seeded Texas a gigantic massive upset with reverberations in that great state of Texas and the basketball community there hoping that they have a chance for another NCAA tournament upset they're going to have to win here tonight to get that opportunity against the Aggies. Here we go. Championship night in the WAC. The number one seed wearing the home white uniforms. And it's a longtime Aggie, the local kid, Johnny McCants, who wins the opening tip. And New Mexico State has the ball first. Wide open look from the outside. And it does not fall for Jabari Rice. No shots will be there for New Mexico State because they are going to double Teddy Allen as often as they can. Starting five for the Wildcats. Many of those players with experience from that huge tournament upset last year against Texas, and Abilene Christian gets the first bucket of the game. Meanwhile, you got Allen, you got McCants, you got Jabari Rice, some very experienced players, and Teddy Allen gets his first shot of the evening. Try to tell you, it doesn't take much time. There's a lot of Jaron Cumberland in this game. If you remember Jaron Cumberland from Cincinnati, bigger guard. And if Abilene Christian's making threes, it changes the trajectory of this game. They went 4 of 20 last night in their matchup versus Seattle. Did not shoot the three well. Because the Aggies are bigger, the Wildcats need to make perimeter threes tonight. Good ball movement for New Mexico State. But in the end, a swipe. And the ball knocked out of the hands of a lock, but out of bounds off of Abilene Christian. The head coach in Las Cruces, Chris Jans, his fifth year, been a part of this program for a long time and has done a terrific job as the head coach. Chris Jans has got his fourth regular season title in the last five years. Unbelievable winning pedigree for Chris Jans in New Mexico State. Pass from a lock, and then the foul. McCants got knocked down, so he'll shoot free throws. For fans of the WAC, it seems like Johnny McCants has been around forever. Forever is an overstatement, but not by much. There's Brett Tanner. He's been around the Abilene Christian program for a long time, although this is his first year as the head coach after that incredible run last year. Joe Golding got the job at UTEP, so Brett Tanner stepped in. 
had an opportunity to do a few UTEP games this season, and you should hear Coach Golding talk about Coach Tanner. He says he is the guy to continue to lead this program. We, I left it in a good culture, and he's the guy to bring it up another level. And since, the, it's, since the Wildcats have made the jump to Division One, they've qualified for postseason four of the five last eligible seasons. It's no accident that they're here, Dave. Yeah, that's an amazing story, really, the trajectory of their program. Missed free throws, and yet the rebound for the Aggies, rebounding be a huge factor. Mexico State's got a massive size advantage. But Abilene Christian, nobody generates turnovers the way that they do, and they got another one there. Number one in the nation in steals, Abilene Christian. And then when they're turning great defense to offense, you can see why this is an exhausting team to play against and prepare for. They're not big, but they will grind you out. They are pesky and aggressive. A great sign for them that some of those shots from the outside are going down. Allen, the creator here. Outside, Rice, no. Rebound, snatched away by Makai Morris. So Dave, you've watched a lot of college basketball right now. Does this look like a team that's playing their fourth game in four days? And it is remarkable, the energy they muster. Here's a three, and that one is off the mark. Garyon Simmons, who had a big game last night in the semifinals. He's their leading scorer. But you can't play for Abilene Christian if you don't have a high motor. That's just how they play. You got to be mentally tough too. I, I was at shoot around this morning and I was half asleep. As soon as I walked in, it was loud. I was wide awake by the end of shoot around. Allen over the top, a lock, couldn't finish. But a whistle and a foul. He got pushed. This is, these type of plays are going to be open for New Mexico State. You see all the attention that Teddy Allen will get. Anytime he drives, you're not just going to see two. You're going to see three Abilene Christian defenders trying to force him to kick it. That's what Coach Tanner wants, drive and kick. He doesn't want Allen any good looks. Well, that whistle, big one for Abilene Christian. Makai Morris has picked up two quick fouls. He's been the big scorer in this tournament for the Wildcats. One shot. And got off to a real quick start here tonight. So that's that's a big whistle. He goes to the bench. He had 13 points last night. Hit a couple of big time clutch free throws late against Seattle. Also coming in from the lock comes out. Will McNair. More size. New Mexico State has always had big guys. And this year's team, no different. Cameron's had a breakout performance in this tournament. McCants blocks his shot, though. Now Allen driving all the way. Allen, no! Got his own miss. Allen under the bucket. Shot blocked. Aggies still have it. Rice fumbled, but retains possession. See Reggie Miller almost chased that down. Full 360. Good handle by Rice, though. Oh, nice. Good look. He's had a couple good looks in the early going. And in Daniels, one of the littlest players on the floor, gave it up. Here's a three. Yeah, that one's no good, but the tap back by Cameron. New possession for Abilene Christian, a blocking foul. Man, hard contact there between Mason and McCants. Well, you and I were talking before the game. We expected a physical game tonight. And this is a great job by Abilene Christian of making something good happen after an offensive rebound. We may not talk about a lot of offensive rebounds for Abilene Christian tonight. They do not have the height advantage by a long shot. It's something that the Aggies cannot relax on because of how hard the Wildcats play. And Mason makes the first of two free throws. This year went over 1,000 career points. Only scored two in the semifinal win against Seattle. So important to this Wildcats team. It's like 14 double-figure games this season. 
when he's making shots, you can sense great confidence in the offense of the Wildcats. So he checks out, and Abilene Christian, that's one thing that they do a lot of, the sub players in and out, try to keep everybody fresh to keep up that intensity level on the defensive end. Swarm Allen forced him to give up the ball. Rice driving. Rice came up way short. Now a foul against the Aggies. Timeout on the floor, but we're going to keep it here. And we welcome those of you who just watched Montana State win the Big Sky. Congratulations to the Bobcats. Dave Fleming, Mike O'Donnell here in Las Vegas. It's the WAC Championship Final. The number one seed, the powerhouse in this league, New Mexico State against a true upstart. Abilene Christian, their first year in the WAC, the sixth seed in this tournament. They've already had to play three games in three nights. This is their fourth in four days. And yet the Wildcats have an early 10-5 lead. And it's been three-point shots. Where they really struggled last night, they went 4-20 from three. Tonight, starting to knock down threes, have more rhythm on offense. And that little mini bracket doesn't really, truly tell the full no. story. New Mexico State got the buy end of the semis. They win last night to get here to the championship game. Abilene Christians already had to win three games, including against the two other teams, Stephen F. Austin and Seattle, that shared the regular season WAC championship with New Mexico State. So the Wildcats trying to do something that has never been done in the history of this tournament and make it back to another NCAA tournament. Last year they took down the Longhorns of Texas as a 14 seed. Different stage, different stakes, although this is a very big game on both sides. But for Abilene Christian, this would be a similar kind of upset because of the way New Mexico State has dominated this WAC conference. Good year in the WAC. Great year in the WAC. You can see what New Mexico State has done. Seattle and Coach Victor, who just got Coach of the Year in the WAC. Stephen F. Austin, Gavin Kensmeal, David Kakaris had a great season. And then Grand Canyon, Abilene Christian, Utah Valley. If you haven't paid attention to WAC basketball, it is really, really efficient. I like to call the WAC a gritty box of chocolates because each team plays differently, but each team has a chip on their shoulder, and you can sense a, a, a different style, but also every single team plays crazy hard each night. It is a fun conference to watch. Natalie Christian with the ball and the lead. Tobias Cameron driving. Got away with a walk. I think he did. Shoots the three, got knocked to the floor, saved in bounds, and off of New Mexico State. So a nice hustle play there by Reggie Miller to keep the possession for Abilene Christian. And again, another possession where New Mexico State with the size advantage did not box out. And Abilene Christian, the smaller team, getting their second offensive rebound. Massive size advantage between these two teams. Daniels pulls up, came up way short, and it's out of bounds. It'll be New Mexico State ball. I mean, 10 years ago, you talk to the people at Abilene Christian, they were Division II just a decade ago. Not only were they D2, they were one of the worst D2 teams in the country. So you fast forward a decade, you make the transition to D1, and you find this formula with Joe Golding and now Brett Tanner of defensive forcing turnovers, and they've turned into just a terrific story. The new athletic director and Zach Lasseter, and they just started renovations on a $52 million arena to Moody Coliseum, 3,800 seats, state-of-the-art facility. It is going to be immaculate. First year in the whack and trying to win the tournament championship. Teddy Allen cut off on the baseline. Here's Henry, jumper, good. Clayton Henry, who's not a big scorer, typically, for the Aggies, hits the three. Teddy Allen could have 10 assists tonight if he wanted to. They're doubling him so much. Guys are going to be open on the perimeter for New Mexico State. Now, Damian Daniels has missed some shots here early, missed that one. Here's Teddy Allen. At 41 in the only regular season meeting between these two teams. 
Pulls up for a three here, and he got fouled. He does a great job every time he plays of drawing fouls, baiting defenders into jumping with him, right? It's the cardinal sin of basketball. Never foul a shooter. You see how you contested that shot where you went across your body with your left hand. You actually want to contest that shot with the opposite hand, the same hand of the shot the ball is being released from. So I guess they're checking whether that was a foul shooting a three or a two. Teddy Allen really has had a fantastic season for New Mexico State. Player of the year in the WAC and newcomer of the year has averaged 20 points a game in WAC play. And he was fifth in the WAC in rebounds. He really did a lot. But the thing that changed his game to where he became more of a complete player is Chris Jans turned him into a more capable defender. That's the one thing that was really missing from his game. And you, Dave, you said it earlier. You can't play in New Mexico State and not play defense. That's the rule when you come play for Chris James. His head coach said, look, is he the best defender we have? No, but he is a very willing defender. And for Teddy Allen, well-traveled sort of undersells. Went to high school in Phoenix. He's going to get three free throws, by the way. He was recruited by Chris Jans out of high school. Started his college career with Bob Huggins at West Virginia. Went to Wichita State, didn't ever play there, but was in the program for a year. Then to junior college. Last year was in the Big Ten at Nebraska. Was Nebraska's leading scorer. He was all Big Ten. Sixth highest scorer in the Big Ten. I mean, this is a kid that they call him Teddy Buckets for a reason. He is going to give you points anytime he steps onto the court. Hey, Coach Jans was, was telling us, look, I mean, you... you, you are a part of that many programs, people start to wonder. He said he's been nothing but a hard worker and a great part of our program. Who knows, maybe he feels like it's his final shot. And he's taking advantage of it. So those three free throws give the Aggies the lead. Adeline Christians missed their last four shots from the field. That one comes up well short. Whips one down low. The extra pass was almost stolen. Here's Rice, wide open three. Good! A 9 nothing run here for the Aggies. Down low, Cameron Steele ends that run with a bucket. And Steele can do that. He's more of a catch-and-shoot perimeter player, but he's got really good feet. Anytime Teddy Allen has the basketball, they ball screen with him. He is going to double, and that's a lazy pass by Allen. Hey, lucky he got it back. There down low, one on one. Rice. With the shot clock winding down, tough shot, good! He hits another three. Because that was great help and recover defense by Reggie Miller. Just a better shot by Rice. Second team all whack member. Right, he's been around the program for a long time. Nice back to play, but the reverse, no good for Miller. This is where they're good. Defense to offense. The pass to Henry. Three! And they say two. His foot was on the line. Timeout, Abilene Christian. And that's where New Mexico State can really, really hurt you. Going defense to offense is something we talk about all the time, and New Mexico State does it better than anybody else. Well, it's a 14-2 run for New Mexico State over the last three-plus minutes to turn a deficit into a seven-point lead, biggest of the night so far for the number one seed Aggies. Still a long way to go. Adeline Christian, Makai Morris with his two fouls is back in the game. They need his offense on the court. On the baseline, that one no good. So some good looks for 
The Wildcats not going down. But that's great defense by New Mexico State. That's what they do so well. They make you take tough mid-range jumpers. That's a low percentage shot. 14-footer along the baseline, you live with that. And Teddy Allen, that's pretty high percentage, no question. Almost every shot that Teddy Allen shoots is high percentage. Just a great natural scorer. Here's a three, and that one is off the back iron. Rebound, Willie McNair. Best thing about Teddy's Allen, get, Teddy Allen's game is he never seems to get sped up. And a whistle and a foul. That'll send us to another timeout. Teddy Buckets does it better than anybody else. Mid-range game, I'll take it, old school. He knows how to get it. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal, helping you plan, protect, invest, and retire. Well, in a lot of ways, Las Vegas has become the capital of the college basketball world during Champ Week. There's just so much good college hoops going on in this town this time of year. New Mexico State has taken a nine-point lead, and the three-point shooting has led the way. You look at great offense, passing is always superior, and that's what New Mexico State has done early on this first half. They have four assists on six made field goals. Because Abilene Christian is doubling Teddy Allen virtually every single time, corner threes are open, wing threes are open, and if you move the basketball, someone is going to find an open shot if Abilene Christian continues to double Teddy Allen. And he's going to the bench. Mario McKinney, among a couple others, locked back in the game. McKinney drives baseline, finds Allen. Shot clock winding down, the three, not this time, and a rebound for the Wildcats. It's time to run a good offensive set right now for the Wildcats. Here it comes, little horns. Abilene's one for their last 11 from the field. Good skip. Morris dribbles into it. Two, good. They're going to have to hit mid-range jumpers. It's very hard to get off consistent three-point shots versus this New Mexico defense because of how far they push you off the three-point line. They got a lot, a lot of long-rangey defenders. Also really physical, too. And just sometimes just pushing the ball handler two or three feet beyond the three-point line disrupts an offense. Offensive rebound. Should Mike Peek. Walk. Yeah, might have walked. Extra pass along the baseline and a foul. Mario McKinney was fouled shooting that little floater. First foul on Simmons. That's a couple times already in this game where Abilene's fouled jump shooters. It's not making their head coach real happy. Well, it's happening because of how much they're in scramble mode. And they're in scramble mode because they're doubling Teddy Allen. If you're going to scramble out to shooters, you've got to have perfect closeout opportunity. It's got to be help the helper and have perfect closeout. Or if you're late, the foul's going to happen. Kinney, not that time. So it's an eight point lead for the Aggies. Abilene Christian ball. We got a little zone here. 1 3 1 extended zone for the Aggies. Didn't see that last night at all. That's something they've done this year, mixed up their defenses. Shot clock winding down. That three with a very friendly bounce goes for Arion Simmons. That's their leading score. He can hit that. Simmons absolutely can hit that three. He was three of six from three last night versus Seattle. I mean, the big body kind of belies what kind of player he is. He likes to shoot from the outside. He's smooth. He's got a real good touch. Nice flash by a lock. Yeah, a lock, though, got blocked around the rim and then commits the personal. That was point guard and shooting guard defending a lock along <laughs> the baseline. You kidding me? Was that Miller? 
Let's see who got it. That was Reggie Miller. What a great play. One of the best defenders in the WAC. Fifth all-time in steals in Abilene Christian history, coming up with a big fella's play along the baseline. Yeah, Reggie Miller, you think back to that upset in the NCAA tournament last year against the powerhouse Texas Longhorns. Reggie Miller hit some of the biggest shots down the stretch of that game. Simmons was open there, drives it with the left hand, no. And the rebound out of bounds off of Will McNair. This is actually where Abilene Christian can manufacture some points. The Aggies do not guard based on out of bounds plays well. Got him open. They did. He hesitated, then shoots. No. It never works. It does not work. Take it from a guy who could only shoot threes. That was it. <laughs> never <laughs> pump fake on an open three. Let it go. Teddy Allen, by the way, he got popped. He's taken a long time. You might see him coming to your picture finally, maybe. Well, he never really made it in. Right, he missed the shot. Just kind of four on five that possession. That three from the corner, no. Rebound Allen. Rice in New Mexico State trying to run. Dribbling through traffic, which against Abilene Christian usually doesn't work. Best team in the country in steals. They get it off dribbles, they get it off passes. If you're careless, even for a nanosecond, they will make you pay. This three, way too strong from Emmanuel Allen. And another, same spot on the court, steal by the Wildcats. There's a reason they lead the country in that number. Game's gotten a little sloppy, which for Abilene Christian, that's kind of the way they want to play. They love gritty, pesky basketball. This is playing right into the Wildcats' hands. Cameron whips a pass to Simmons, who goes down the lane as his shot blocked. The follow also blocked. Johnny McCants with some defense there at the rim. Allen, offensive foul. Not happy with the call. Johnny McCants, one of the great defenders in the history of New Mexico State basketball, coming up with two back-to-black monster blocks for the Aggies. You're watching Champ Week presented by Principal from Las Vegas, Nevada. We're at the Orleans Arena, just a mile or so from the fountains at the Bellagio. By the way, Selection Sunday tomorrow, we got Bracketology presented by Lowe's on ESPN at 6 Eastern. As the field is announced, we'll break it down. Then you got the Women's Selection Special at 8 Eastern on ESPN and ESPN2. You got the Women's Selection Special that continues on ESPN2 through the 9 o'clock hour Eastern time. And then the full field on both sides will be broken down at 10 Eastern on ESPN2. Drink it all in, Dave Fleming. It's the best <laughs> time of the year, my friend. The month of March. Got to love it. Yeah, so tomorrow it all comes to a head. One of these teams will be in that field of 68 on the men's side, the winner of this WAC championship. A little double team out of the timeout. Get back to that 1-3-1 one -one zone trap. Emily Christian, I mean, they're in this game. They are shooting 27%. They're over their last six. And they turn it over on this possession. You can't get zo soft zone offense because even if you think they're in a zone, they're going to play slower, less aggressive. That's not the style of New Mexico State. They're still going to dig and try to get deflections and steals in that zone. The Wildcats defense has tightened up here of late. That's keeping them in the game. Abilene's in a zone now, too. They are. McCann shoots the three, too strong. Damian Daniels with the rebound. Entry pass down low, out of bounds. 
I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a lot more 2-3 zone from Abilene Christian. Mexico State got up fairly big against Grand Canyon last night. Grand Canyon went to that 2-3 zone and it drastically slowed down the Aggies offense. Coach Tanner talked about that in shoot around. He said, guys, be ready. We're going to go to 2-3 zone. We can slow them down. And steps out of bounds. Well, the offense just not pretty right now for Abilene Christian. Allen comes out. Simmons back in the game. And if you play that zone, Abilene Christian hangs her hat on generating turnovers. Can you still create some of that havoc out of a zone? It's hard to do if you're not rebounding well. Really hard to do. more than four minutes since the Aggies have scored. Here's a three in and out. No good. So it far they're holding their own. Abilene Christian is on the glass. It happens a lot in, in, in championship games when you're playing multiple games in a row. And that is a great charge. Who else but McCants? He is their steady leader. Even though he's more of a forward and wing, Boy, you want to talk about taking one in the chest. My goodness, that was a shot. That takes some courage to stand there with Simmons charging at you. He goes to the bench. So Simmons with two personals in the first half. 5.40 to go until halftime. Nate Pryor in with the ball. Although McNair had it stripped away by Daniels. Dug down and comes up with a turnover. Can't bring it down, right, Dave? The guards of the Wildcats, they're coming. So the defensive piece for Abilene Christian is there. The offense just hasn't been. McCants rips away after another deflection, block shot. Well, just an enormous amount of credit to New Mexico State's transition defense. A lot of those steals haven't resulted in points because the Aggies have gotten back, matched up, really, really well in transition D. And Teddy Allen having a hard time even getting touches these last few possessions. He almost lost it, but they called a foul on Daniels reaching in. That's really well where Teddy Allen can eat you up, because he knows, OK, we're in the bonus. So if I don't have a good, clean look, you better believe that Teddy Allen has put his shoulder down and he's drawing a foul. It's one of his skill sets that doesn't get talked about enough. His ability to draw fouls is just as good as his shooting ability. So he gets to the free throw line for one and one. Trying to break this scoreless. I mean, nobody has scored in five minutes on either side. There's a point. Best it's still way to possible. Do it. <laughs> Best way to do it. At 25 last night against Grand Canyon, he was 12 of 12 from the free throw line. So. I'm not just making it up. It's not a hot take, Dave Fleming. He's really good at drawing fouls. Yeah, he shoots made all at 85%. His, yeah, all of his free throws tonight, so that's been a big part of their offense. Seven-point lead for the Aggies, the top seed in this WAC tournament. This is where Mason needs to get going. He needs to make a play. That's, I'm okay with that shot. Even though it's an air ball, he needs to get going. Gets 11 a game. Very lucky that Cameron didn't throw it away. Shot clock winding down. Kind of a sidestep three that misses to the side. But for Abilene Christian, they get a break. It goes off of Allen out of bounds. You can tell that uh, Reggie Miller does not practice the James Harden sidestep <laughs> to three. That He didn't look comfortable shooting that. That's not his shot. Abilene Christian having a hard time finding any shots that they like. They're two for their last 14. Tried to go for the lob, wasn't there, defended well. Away from the ball, foul, I think, against Will McNair. It's such a great front court defense for New Mexico State between McCants and McNair. Every once in a while, they're getting foul trouble. They do a great job of contesting shots, taking charges, and you'll see them out of the perimeter. They can guard out at the three-point line as well. That's one of the many reasons why this New Mexico State defense is so good. Cameron, Tobias Cameron's been a breakout star in this WAC championship, and they need him. And at 18 last night, 
got to the free throw line a lot. And if, if Mason is struggling, if Simmons is struggling, you said it. Cameron can be that next third guy. Over the top, McCants finds Allen. Three, no. A nice rebound from Steele there. Well, the offensive numbers are really not pretty. Abilene Christian somehow avoided a travel there. They're hanging in this game despite it. Here's Cameron, got a good look. Too strong. That's what they do. This Wildcats team is relentless. They are to be the most gritty team in the whack. No fear. They really are. They thrive in these games that just are not aesthetically pleasing. Henry, three, good. He's hit his second of this first half. If he's scoring, that's bonus for the Aggies. When you have your role players step up in championship games, that's a good sign. It takes so much pressure off your big-time scores like Teddy Allen. Good backdoor cut by Ricky Miller. Miller couldn't get in position to get a shot off. Daniels along the baseline, no. And you may say, hey, they got a good look. That's a bad look. That's a low percentage shot on the baseline. But that's what New Mexico State forces you to do. Offensive Charge. foul. Daniels missed the shot on one end. He hustled back and got in position to take the charge on this end. That's what they do. Missed shots do not affect their defense. This is going to go back and forth tonight. But if New Mexico State's knocking down threes from their role players, you better watch out. The Aggies can get it rolling. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Visit HerculesTires.com. Well, all this great college hoops we've been talking about, we're here for the WAC Final in Las Vegas. Champ Week comes to an end tomorrow, and we got two more championship games on ESPN on the app. The SEC title game at 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific. What a story Texas A&M running through that championship has been. They take on Tennessee and then Memphis and Houston in the American at 315. That's tomorrow. Texas A&M, they were down and out. They weren't even talked about as a bubble team, and now they may have just played their way in on the right side of the bubble. And then Memphis looks to be that with their win versus SMU this afternoon, I, I, Memphis is in. They, Penny Hardaway has done a phenomenal job since that loss against SMU in January. Went 11-1 since that that loss versus SMU in mid-January. Tigers looks like a dangerous team in come March. Leaning on the old guys. Despite all the young talent on that roster, it has been a remarkable story. They've been better without Amani Bates. They really have been. So final two plus minutes here of the first half. Abilene Christian trying to hang in, but it's just been a lot of that. Missed shots, sloppiness on offense. No matter how scrappy your defense is, at some point, you got to make some buckets. 20, 25 percent from the field, seven to 28 from the field, and they've only been in the free throw line once, so two or two from the line. And it's not like New Mexico State is shooting that much better. They're only shooting 36 percent, but they're eight of 11 from the free throw line. They've been able to draw fouls, slow the game down, and get points at the charity strike. Inbound play here. Johnny McCants. Big man, McNair shoots a three, got the friendly roll. It's a good gym to shoot in, those rims. They've always been friendly here at the Orleans. And Will McNair took advantage of it. Dave, I think you and I could go four or five from the three-point line with those rims. Speak you for see yourself. that soft? <laughs> that was soft. Yeah, that's just always been the way it has been here at the Orleans. Great place to shoot. Daniel scoops it up and in. Adeline Christian needed that. They're back to that zone. Wildcats in that 2 3 zone. They worked on that shoot around. Blaine Henry's played a good half, gave it up. Shot clock winding down. Pryor, spin move. Pryor, too strong. Got his own miss. Missed the follow. McNair grabs it. Finds Rice. Here's a three. Off iron. And another opportunity for the Aggies. You play small, 
and you go zone, you better box out. You can't jump in New Mexico State. They will eat you up on the offensive glass. Third opportunity here. Henry, no. And the ball went right off the head of Reggie Miller, but knocked out of bounds by McNair. So Emily Christian survived that. And now the shot clock is off. 24 seconds to go until halftime. They can hold for the final shot. That literally fool's gold defense by Abilene Christian because there was very little pressure. Aggies got into the paint at will, got multiple looks at three. Don't be surprised to see some high ball screen action for Abilene Christian in this possession. And Mason is a guy who just hasn't gotten going tonight. And he is really the second go-to player for the Wildcats. That's number 20. He's got the ball right now. Going to take it down about five seconds on the clock. Now he makes his move. Going to the rim. McNair slaps it out of wow. bounds. Wow. Emphatically. Yeah, and that was a vicious block by McNair. Well, McNair's playing well. He's knocked down a three. He ha has a couple blocks already tonight. He also might have blocked that one off the arm of Corbin Mason, but, or Corian Mason. Cameron, three, no. And that follow does not count. So that's sort of how the first half went. For Abilene Christian, they played tough defense like they always do, but not a lot of shots went down. So it's halftime here at the Orleans in Las Vegas. The underdog, the sixth seed, Abilene Christian, trying to pull off an upset. So pass to Simmons, right now, who goes down the lane. Seed of Mexico State in control with the 30-21 lead. Well, you're watching Champ Week presented by Principal as we get ready to start the second half here in Las Vegas. It's the WAC Championship and the top seed New Mexico State has a 30-21 lead against Abilene Christian. Dave Fleming, Mike O'Donnell back with you here in the Orleans Arena. And Mike, I mean, the Aggies have been the bully in this conference for a long time. They sort of played like it in the first half. Yeah, defensively, they were really dialed in. They mixed it up, right? We saw the man, we saw the 1-3-1 zone and then taking defense to offense is what really worked for them. Yeah, it was a good combo of some outside shooting plus that stuff you're talking about. Well, they hit six threes in the first half, and New Mexico State doesn't get enough credit for how good of a spot-up three-point shooting team they are. They're the 25th most efficient spot-up shooting team in the country. That's better than Michigan State, Virginia Tech, and Villanova. And then it would turn into a block party with McNair and McCants. The Aggies had five blocks in the first half, two for McNair, two for McCants. And then here's that defense to offense that we just talked about. You get out and run a transition. Teddy Allen, skip pass, corner pocket three. That is New Mexico State basketball to a tee. I mean, they did not overall shoot the ball all that well. Those threes were a big factor. You mentioned the free throw shooting was a big factor. Aggies got to the line more than the Wildcats did. Abilene Christian has some work to do if they want to be the upstart in this league, first year in the WAC, go to a third straight NCAA tournament. You have to be careful, too. You're going to play hard, gritty, and physical. You have to stop sending the Aggies to the free throw line. They were 8 of 11 from the free throw line. And you want to talk about a team that's already got fresh legs. That's the last thing you want is to give the Aggies even more fresh legs when they send them to the line. And some shots for the Wildcats are just going to have to start going oh, down. Maybe that's a good beginning for Simmons. Well, that's a look right there. Old school baby hook, stared down afterwards. Makes me nervous. Uh, he's, it's almost like he's trying to talk himself into, all right, we're going to do this. He went for the steal there. McCants goes all the way and dunks it home. McCants just doesn't get enough credit for how good he is. Just there's so much attention on Teddy Allen. But he's been one of the all-time great players in the history of Aggies basketball. He's a local kid, went to high school in Las Cruces, so I think a little extra affection for him. Tobias Cameron had an open three, gave it up. That three contested and no good. Jabari Rice comes away with the ball. Clayton Henry stepped out of bounds. They don't do this anymore, Dave. Drop step, baby hook <laughs> over the left shoulder. Old school, and there's McCants ripping through the lane. A little more new school. Man, oh, that's a tough ball. Wow, Morris hit the wow did he pop up quick, though. My goodness. I think they're going to take a look at that foul. 
Morris is tough as nails. Did you see him pop up? Players don't do this anymore. Ooh. Man. Watch him pop up. In a little bit of pain? No, nope. not for me. Step right up, walk it off. Wow. It's Philly Kid. Dave, I, I probably would have been down there for about five, six minutes after a foul like that. That hurt. I'm trying to look and see if there was a little bit extra by Teddy Allen. I mean, he, there's no question he made a play in the basketball initially, but then grabbed his left arm a little bit. If we see a flagrant one here, I wouldn't be surprised. Fisher is going to come over and relay their call to us. And they are going to call that flagrant one against the player of the year in the WAC, Teddy Allen. That'll be his third personal foul as well. Teddy Allen's most likely going to go to the bench and sit for an extended period of time with three fouls. Although right now, it doesn't look like anybody's checking in. A lot of faith. Coach Jans has a lot of faith in his senior. Well, thankfully, Morris seems to be okay. So the free throws for Makai Morris. That's guts right there. You take a fall like that, step up to the free throw line, nobody around you, knock down the first one. Second one, perfect. He's had a great tournament. Maybe he can help lead Abilene Christian back into this game. And now Teddy Allen will check out. McKinney comes in. I don't think the Wildcats have gotten the defense of the Aggies shifted enough. One thing that Coach Tanner talked about in shootaround is just, we have to set a lot of screens tonight. A lot. Because the Aggies don't guard screens very well. Uh, Morris hits a long two. So a painful but productive possession for Makai Morris and Abilene Christian. The lead is down to five. would be surprised if the Wildcats ran a set every single time to get more offensive fluidity. And I think they need Morris to take a bunch of shots. Rice, bounce pass down low. A lock, double team came. And he found his teammate McKinney for the layup. It was a great cut by McKinney. Good pass by a lock. Late double team led to that weak side cut. Simmons three. In and out. Offensive rebound and a follow foul. Mason will go to the free throw line. And here's the Morris three, just lines it up, little jab step, like he's in the park, rips a three. And then McKinney, little weak side cut after the double team. That was a really late double team by Reggie Miller. Good patience in the post by a lot. Corian Mason, well short at the free throw line. He's got five. Now he had two in the semifinal win against Seattle. Makes one of two this trip. One way the Wildcats really extended the game last night is they shot 39 free throws. An absurd amount of free throws because they were just so aggressive attacking the paint. Yeah, and I, I, you know, you hate sort of to see a game played like that. Now an offensive foul. McKinney. Commits the charge. Coach Jans is furious. Absolutely furious. I would tend to agree with him. Does he get over in time? I'd be upset too. To me, that's more of a that's more of a no call. That 50-50 call. We are seeing too many charges called in college basketball. I think we let that one go. Abilene Christian drew bad shot. Eight of them. In last night's game, that was a tough shot for Mason. Rice's pass was deflected out of bounds. Eight charges drawn in one game. Remarkable. I would say six of them were legit. And Chris Jans said to us, well, they don't really keep a stat on that, but he would be shocked if Abilene Christian didn't leave the country in charges drawn. So if 
Elias Cameron out there playing defense. He's got a big gash now on his left arm. There's a three. Henry way too strong, and they're calling a foul. I think Reggie Miller pulled a lock down to the ground. Yeah, this was a wrestling match underneath the rim. Should have watched Reggie Miller. Actually, not as much contact as I as it looked live. Good sell by Locke, really good sell. So 20 on the shot clock, Aggies keep the ball. With no Teddy Allen out there, you figure Jabari Rice is gonna have to be a little bigger part of the offense. This is a time for the Wildcats where you want to string up consecutive stops and then get something in the offensive end with Teddy Allen out with those three fouls. Here's Rice. Contested three, good. Jabari Rice, so talented. He's so talented because he can play multiple guard positions. He's a true combo guard. You need him to play point, fine. You need him on the shooting guard to hit a three, fine. He can do it all in the backcourt for the Aggies. Just a junior, Jabari Rice, he always feels like plays with a chip on his shoulder. That is a great sweep to push the defender away and just give him an inch of daylight to rip a three. That his sweep jab step is such a great move for a guard like that. His coach very complimentary of his unselfishness, willingness to play those multiple positions, get out of his comfort zone, tries another three, not this time. Mason, offensive foul. This time McKinney returns a favor and draws the charge. That one I'm okay with. You can be moving and have a charge, absolutely. Look, but he lowered the shoulder, took it in the chest. No hands, you saw his hands go up immediately, he took it in the chest. That was a good charge. Mario McKinney originally played at Missouri, he didn't play a whole lot, still very inexperienced. He started to emerge, a talented young man. Rice to the bucket, a little step through, draws the foul. Had a chance for an end one. He got that downhill drive because everybody's so worried about the three-point shot. After he just hit a three, you get that space wide open, and Rice does such a good job of attacking. I I'm a big fan of Rice's game. He plays with his chip on his shoulder. And my favorite thing about his game, a lot of times, doesn't show up in the stat sheet. He is so intelligent on the defensive end that he will go to Coach James either before the game, at shoot-around, sometimes the night before, after he's watching film and he says, Coach, I think we should play this player this way or we should play this player that way. And Coach Jans has so much confidence in Jabari Rice that he says, okay, I think you're right. That takes a high level of intelligence and trust to go to your head coach and say, we shouldn't play it like this, we should play it like that. Makes both free throws. So after an Abilene Christian push, now to Mexico State, even with the player of the year in this conference on the bench, with some foul trouble, is up the lead back to 11. I really need Simmons to get going here. Cameron, he's not been catching the ball, looking to shoot. Daniels goes to the bucket wow. and somehow scooped it in with a reverse. How did that go in? My goodness. Damian Daniels generously listed at 5'7". Just because you're 6'5", Dave, it doesn't mean that everybody's 5'7". You know? he, he can play. Defending Rice here. Rice might have gotten away with a little push off. Offensive rebound, McKinney puts it back in. How good is McKinney been? You, you, talk, you said it earlier, he is a superstar role player for the Aggies. This role's gonna grow as the years go on, but for now, nice backdoor cut, and the layup missed by Morris. Almost looked like Morris thought there was going to be help defense, and he shot, shied away from the shot. Morris, they're gonna call a jump ball now. 
That'll take us to a timeout. And right now, you get the little fella, Daniels, up and under. And the offensive rebound from McKinn, who's having a real nice game. Got the Aggies up 11. Forty-one thirty. New Mexico State has the lead in this WAC championship game. We got two more champ games tomorrow to cap off champ week in the SEC: Texas A&M and Tennessee at one Eastern, and then the in the American Memphis and Houston, three fifteen Eastern tomorrow Sunday on ESPN. It'll stream on the app. Joe Lenardi's got both Virginia Tech and Texas A&M as among the last four in Virginia Tech's in because they just beat Duke that game that? just went final a few minutes ago and won the ACC one by 15 right a incredible job by Mike Young from Virginia Tech and one of the most dangerous teams in that last four in is Wyoming head coach Jeff Linder out in the Mountain West they have one of the most difficult offenses to scout for in the country Cowboys could advance and turn for sure bench Will McNair who played a big part in the first half gets his first bucket of the second half. He's just a huge presence inside. But he moves so well without the basketball. So you don't often see big guys cut like that. Morris way too strong on the three out of bounds. So much talk about the backcourt of New Mexico State. But watch McNair. He slips the screen from the flare and just has a great little touch around the rim. Post hate moving out the ball because they just want to plant themselves right on the block. I don't mean to sound like a bitter point guard, but that's what post players love to do. <laughs> but between McNair and McCants, I mean, Dave, you know, if this team makes it, if the Aggies win the night, it's hard to scout for in a neutral floor, that those types of front court players. Attack McKinney to the free throw line. Tough. McKinney's giving the yeah. Aggies a real boost here. Yeah, that's, that's with Allen on the bench. Just another really hard foul. That's a good backdoor cut by McKinney. Doesn't shy away from contact. Third foul against Arion Simmons. That's big. That's big. Simmons is their go-to emotional leader on the floor. He'll come out, steal back in. Danger time here for Abilene Christian, down 14 now. You're 100% at the time where you need to start looking for semi-contested three-point shots. I understand you're not shooting the ball well. You're 3 of 15 from 3. But this is the time where you need to start looking for three-point shots. Open this thing up a little bit. Daniels got sort of turned around. McCants just couldn't save it. Hustle play dives into the stands and goes a long way back there. Look at three Aggie players sprint over to help him up. That's, look, you know, culture can be used in a really cliche way. But that's culture right there. You got your leader, your senior leader in McCants, who came back for his fifth year. Three players sprint over to help him up. I mean, he's like their dad. He's been around so long. They better sprint over I, I assumed you were going to go a grandpa joke there, for sure. No, he's not old enough to be a grandpa, though. Dad, I'll go with that one. He's a good player. Trying to win a WAC tournament championship for the third time in his career. Cameron Offensive. baseline. Yeah, he pushed off. Look who it is. One of the all-time great New Mexico State players, Johnny McCants, just making the winning play. Look at this. That is textbook defense. You could cut film with that clip and show it at every single high school basketball camp on how to cut off a baseline drive. That was awesome. Yeah, he also did ask for a break. So I, I, I don't know if on that play or on the fall, he's shaking his right hand, which is already taped up. So he's hurting a little bit. He's holding his right hand. That is worth monitoring for New Mexico State. With the ball up 14, just over 13 minutes to go. This is a good defensive possession for the Wildcats. Look how far out the Aggies are. Late shot clock, Rice, and man, he hits the floor hard. They're going to say offensive foul. 
And Jabari Rice came right down on his hip, his lower back. This is the fifth or sixth very, very physical and awkward fall. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. To me, the ability with replay, that's a dangerous play to make defensively by Daniels. Because he got underneath Rice. And that could have easily been called a block. Well, hopefully Jabari Rice is all right. He's walking it off. I, I mean, you and I don't do a lot of games together. We both each work a lot of college basketball games. I don't know if you agree with me. I, the last month, I have seen so much of that. Yeah. Hard fouls, hard falls off of the block charge situation. And you, it kind of makes you wonder. That I need to, at the, at the end of this season, I'm going to go back and try to look the best I can and see how many total charges have been taken this season compare with other seasons because it feels like it's been off the charts this season, the number of charges that have been called. And, and, and teams are looking to draw the charge more and more. Yeah, it's, it's dangerous. Morris back in the game. No on the three. He had a good look. That's why just teams need to shoot more threes. That's why I shot threes. I didn't want to go down there, Dave. It's, it's a lot less painful to chuck him up from the outside. <laughs> Eddie Allen still on the bench for New Mexico State. Pretty remarkable. The Aggies not just surviving without him. That three is too strong for Mike Peake. On the lane, initiating some contact. Allen finishes. Emmanuel Allen. There goes McKinney. Flipped it up. No. Rebound. McNair. And a foul. McNair's been everywhere. I love his energy tonight. Big fella's been getting after it. Evelyn Christian needs to get more of those semi-transition buckets like this one from Allen to get back into this one. They're down 12. All right, our NBA Sunday Showcase doubleheader on ABC starts in Brooklyn. You get KD and the Nets and the Knicks at 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific. Then the Mavs and the Celtics, two teams playing really well at 3.30 Eastern, also on ABC. And then later at night, 6 Pacific, 9 Eastern. LeBron's on a tear, isn't he? He and the Lakers against best team in the West right now, the Phoenix Suns. LeBron James, sort of impossible to believe at his age what he's doing to carry a Lakers team that has really struggled outside of his performance. The timing of that 50-point game was incredible because the national media just questioning the Lakers, questioning does, does LeBron still have it, and he goes out, he drops 50 like it was nothing. Yeah, they're going to call a foul on the floor against Abilene Christian. Well, we got 11.49 to go, and the Wildcats are still within striking distance, but this game has become so physical. We've had all these whistles, and we're going to have free throws from now through the end of the game. You would think that favors the team that's ahead by 12. Peak makes the first. Well, if you're New Mexico State, if, if you're the perimeter, and you have a late shot clock and you didn't run your offense well, go downhill, get to the rim, get to the rim. The referees are calling the fouls. It's a physical game, but the fouls are being called. If you're unsure what to do, don't take a bad contested three. Get downhill, get to the rim, get to the free throw line. Yeah, both free throws good. It was funny, you were just talking about Jabari Rice and how vocal he is, suggesting step to his coaching staff in that timeout. He had the grease board out. He was drawing up some plays on the bench. <laughs> I try to tell you, it, it, his, his defensive IQ is off the charts. This kid is probably one of the most underappreciated guards in the WAC. I have thoroughly enjoyed getting to know him and watching 
film on his game. I mean, he grabbed that grease board from yeah. one of those assistant coaches, just grabbed it and started drawing up his own stuff. Double team here and a jump ball. Arrow favors Abilene Christian. Sean Cotton just came in the game. Price is up next to Coach Jans right now, screaming out defensive assignments. <laughs> it's incredible. Chris Jans looked back like, who is that yelling over my shoulder? Oh, it's just Jabari. Here's a three. Good! Simmons and Abilene Christian needed that one. Sometimes it only takes one. Simmons has got a real pure stroke from the top of the key. That could be the guy to ignite a run for the Wildcats. All of a sudden, a little life on the defensive end for Abilene Christian. Cotton runner. Offensive rebound, then McKinney lost it. Look at this. And they're going to say jump ball with McNair hitting the floor. That's Will McNair diving on the floor at six foot ten, And this is Simmons, and McNair was just too late on the closeout. Really just walked up to that closeout. And Simmons absolutely will make you pay on late closeouts. A long stretch on the bench for Teddy Allen, but he comes back in now. You know they're going to him. Laying on the bench. Hasn't had a shot in a while. And he gets a touch here. Here comes the double. They didn't Allen. double. They Tough shot. And another foul against Abilene Christian. They can't handle Will McNair right now on the glass. Well, he's been an absolute tank. And even though McNair's only got five points, he's got eight rebounds. There's 10.52 left. 18 fouls against the Wildcats. Another one-on-one -on -one opportunity here. First one perfect. He does that for a guy who's big and strong. He's got a nice soft touch. And he only shoots 52% from the free throw line, but his form is really good. Made one of two. I gave him the broadcaster's curse. Well, no, actually, he just shot to his percentage. You just pointed out he shoots 50%. Oh, well, I appreciate and that. One of two. That's the nicest thing you've ever said to me, Dave Fleming. <laughs> Thank you. Emily Christian on offense here, and a foul. I thought Mason was going to have a chance for a three point play. Instead, he'll shoot two free throws. This is a really nice curl cut, getting into the paint. I sense kind of a renewed energy and effort on the offensive end for Abilene the last three possessions. They're running a half-court set virtually every time down the court, trying to get more action, more movement. This free throws hurt when you're trying to come from behind. Brent Tanner knows his team is up against it. McCants back in. And you've got... Rice, Allen, McCants, and McNair, and I mean, this is this is the big time lineup for New Mexico State. One of two from Mason. Simmons went for a steal. Rice. Managed to avoid the turnover. They're not doubling Teddy Allen on ball screens anymore. He tried to throw up a lob for McNair. It wasn't a great pass. In transition. Oh, oh my. Step that through great. and a foul on McCants. Oh, my goodness. The Euro in transition for Mason. That was slick. So he goes back to the free throw line. Well, Teddy Allen was on the bench for eight minutes. The top scorer, the player of the year in the WAC, and it sort of looks like he's a little rusty coming back in. It's one of the many reasons as a scorer you never want to be in foul trouble because it disrupts your rhythm if you sit on the bench. For really, for me, two minutes max. Anything beyond two minutes, you automatically feel your legs cold, your legs tight, and it takes at least... 90 seconds of game action before you feel like you're back into the rhythm. Free throw to try to get it back down to single digits. And Mason made both the free throws that time. Set up a little pressure here. 
It's a diamond and one, full court press. They try to trap if they can. Dangerous pass. Bates got it to Allen along the baseline. Allen almost lost it. It's out of bounds, though, off of the Wildcats. Well, I think that 90 seconds hasn't gone by yet. I don't think Teddy Allen's feeling quite normal yet. But they've also, Abilene Christian has also changed the way that they've played Teddy Allen defensively. They're not doubling him on ball screens, but they're now doubling him if he goes into the post. That's what you have to do against great scores. You have to throw a lot of action at them, a different mismatch action at them. If you give them the same look every time, great scores will pick you apart. He found Rice, who swings it to McCants. McCants cut off, tough shot, no. good! No! The old man, with the old man YMCA move along the baseline. It really was. Big shot. Oh, look at McNair on Reggie Miller, the guard. That was great defense. Cameron just falling to the ground. He traveled. It's been a tough game for Tobias Cameron. This is a wily veteran. Had the three initially. Turned it down. Deep in the corner baseline as the shot clock's running down. McCants. This is fourth point tonight. Nice pass from McCants to McNair. Big man to big man. That's McNair moving without the basketball. McCants just a wall on defense with the block shot. McKinney almost lost it. Oh, McNair should flash. He got mouse in the house. Yeah. Too late. Allen, no. And then he goes over the back, I think, to commit his fourth foul. McNair's had such a nice game. He's got eight points. Watch, that's a great cut on the weak side. And it, was, it wasn't just on point, but it was quick and it was efficient. And that was from post to post. Very rarely do you get a post to post pass from three point line along the block. By the way, I give Michael Greenstein, the official who made that call, some credit there. Teddy Allen fired the ball I saw that. at him. I saw that. And he caught it in a championship game. And I think he gave him a glare, but he didn't blow the whistle. He gave him the player of the year extra opportunity to let it go. This is what I'm talking about. He went over the back there, had the ball. I mean, that was, he fired that ball to the official. Oh, yeah. I don't think Michael was all that happy about it, but. It was about a three-second stare down. And he let it go, and I'm, a, I'm appreciative that he let it go. Keep the game flow going, championship game. If you call it technical, that's number five. It could have been. I almost feel like it's taking Allen out. Coach Chance is cool down just a little bit. Now a foul down low. Well, we've had so many whistles in this second half. Fouls are piling up. Both teams in the bonus. Mexico State close to double bonus time now. And you're at a time now for the Wildcats where you can't just trade buckets, you know, or, or just trade free throws. You can't. If you can't find a way to mix up your defense and manufacture two or three consecutive stops in a row with 8.26 left. It, it's, you're coming up on a time where you're running out of, running out of time for just going back and forth and trading buckets before it's too late. You about four minutes here where you need to make some type of run. For all the good things that Brett Tanner's program does, and they do a lot of things well, and it's not a team that's particularly built to come from behind. Both free throws good for McCants. Tough guy performance tonight from Johnny McCants. Lead back to 13. Morris, his teammate fell down. And somehow Mason caught the ball. High IQ play by Allen to sprint over to the open spot to save that possession. 
Simmons, spin move, dribbled it off his leg out of bounds. I think another example of what you're talking about, Will McNair was moving his feet. He's quick, he's nimble, but he's never out of position. That's what makes McNair so good on both ends of the floor. Just a superstar role player for the Aggies. He's been very, very good tonight. Without it, totally showing up in the box score. Down low, McCants. Up top, McNair is going to shoot a long two. Okay, he's been very good most of the night. <laughs> that wasn't his highlight moment. From Las Vegas, a champion's going to be crowned. 7.41 to go in the second half. And New Mexico State leads by 13. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal, helping you plan, protect, invest, and retire. Now coming down the home stretch in this WAC championship game from Las Vegas, New Mexico State has the 13-point lead, and it is pretty impressive that they've done it without the normal contribution from their star scorer, Teddy Allen, who against this Abilene team back in January had 41 tonight. He in foul trouble for a lot of the game. He's got 10. Yeah, he put it one of the all-time great individual performances in Aggies basketball history. And his struggle tonight. He actually came out first couple possessions of the game. Looked really good. But Abilene Christian, their defense in shoot-around was we are slowing down Teddy Allen. That's 100% our focus tonight. We have to slow him down. Also help that he's been in foul trouble for most of the game as well. The problem for the Wildcats is they just have not been able to score a three. No good. They've had lots of good looks. That was wide open. McKinney on the break. McKinney fouled hard. Allen went up and snatched the ball away, but got wow. a lot of body. That actually looked like great defense by Allen. Emmanuel Allen tried to just snatch the ball out of the air. When you go up with two hands like that, it, a lot of times the refs will give you the benefit of the doubt. Pretty throw good. Both free throws good for Mario McKinney. Fifty-five forty, New Mexico State with a fifteen point lead. Simmons passed up the three. Little runner. They're gonna call another offensive foul. Johnny McCants draws the charge for the Aggies. I'm going to give a rule for Abilene Christian on offense. You're either taking a three or you're trying to get to the rim and get fouled. That's it. Floaters, mid-ranges, out of the question. Those are low percentage shots right now at this point in the game. If you want to get back into the game, you got to knock down threes. Or at the free throw line, you, you give yourself a chance to extend this game. It acts as extra timeouts. You can catch your breath. This is your fourth game in four days. Threes or free throws. That's the rule for Abilene Christian moving forward. McKinney into the lane. Gave it up. And a good pass. Clayton Henry lays it in. That was McKinney making a play, though. He's really had a nice night tonight. Eight points, three rebounds, and that's his second assist tonight. Well, the Aggies can sense it, starting to pull away here, up by 17, biggest lead. And Abilene Christian just can't score. Great help to help her by McCants. A steal. Rice three on two. Found Henry, and his shot was blocked. And Allen got a lot of it, but out of bounds. There's a lot of ball and a lot of physical play. A lot of arm on that as well. 
Uh, the, the thing about Abilene Christian is this is how they, they want to and have to play. I mean, it has to be kind of ugly. They're giving Mexico State credit. Been enough good moments for them. McCants, no. Offensive rebound, second chance here. Yeah, and that's a smart decision. Pull the offense out, take it off time. Fans in the building can sense it. McKinney, three short off the front iron. Down low, tough shot, but it goes for Cameron Steele and a timeout for the Wildcats. That'll take us to a timeout here in Las Vegas. 5.20 to go. Aggies churning toward another whack title. Well, New Mexico State 57-42 lead. 5.20 to go from Las Vegas. Champ Week finishes up tomorrow. Two more championship games in the SEC, Tennessee, and Texas A&M. And then in the American, it's Houston and Memphis. And then we'll be ready for Selection Sunday. Ah, the best. If you haven't seen Tennessee play, this might be Rick Barnes' most talented team at Tennessee. They got a freshman point guard named Kennedy Chandler that may end up being a borderline lottery pick this season. And then Memphis beat Houston twice in the regular season. It is really, really hard to beat a Houston team three times in one season. Wouldn't be surprised if Samson got a little bit of bulletin board material heading into that one. Tennessee beat Kentucky today to get to that championship game they love. Kentucky brings out the best in Rick Barnes' balls team. Meanwhile, New Mexico State has dominated this league over the last decade. Teddy Allen back in the game. He's been quiet, but the Aggies have played well. Rice, jumper, no. And McKinney everywhere in this game. The putback is good. He's going to have a bright future. His game's only going to get bigger, and his role's only going to increase if he starts playing like this. He's a big-time high school player. That yep. three goes down for Mason. Emily Christian needs a lot more of that here in the last four-plus minutes. It's just, it's just two rules on offense, threes and free throws. You're either slowing it down or you've got to get triples. It's the only way. Then he's got 10 off the bench. McNair's got eight off the bench. Bench scoring's been good for New Mexico State. They swarm Allen again. Allen trying to get away from the double team. Henry gets a shot off, comes up way short. That's a shot clock violation. Yeah. Henry didn't know. Didn't know the shot clock was rolling down. You gotta lock in and just under four here. Can't have those mental mistakes. You wanna close the championship out. Well, 355 to go. Chris Jans, who is nine and one as a head coach all time in this whack tournament looking to make it 10 and 1 another WAC championship and a bid to the NCAA tournament on the line. Coach Jans has four 20 win seasons in five years in New Mexico State and it's going to be interesting to see where they're seated. I, I think the 12 range is probably kind of their spot it, it, it is a 12 seed if they end up winning this championship game they have a net ranking of 82 2 and 0 in quad one games they got a good win against Davidson on a neutral floor who's a Davidson team that absolutely could advance in the NCAA term. They got a good win at Washington State. Four and two in quad two. It's a strong, strong resume. And they have the size. You know, a lot of teams that you call mid-majors or smaller conference teams, you go up against somebody huge in the NCAA tournament, you have a hard time matching up. They can match up size-wise. And, but it's more than that, though, Dave, is they also have a score that can give you 30 on a neutral floor in Teddy Allen. So when you've got the size, yes. They play hard, yes. Difficult to prepare for, but then Teddy Allen can give you 30. Layup missed. Long rebound. Aggies have it. Allen lob and McKinney with a spectacular catch, but he couldn't stay in bounds. Allen's lobs have not been on point tonight. No, he's throwing it up to McKinney like you're throwing it up to Tracy McGrady. You've got to get him a little bit closer to the rim on that. 
I mean, Teddy Allen has frankly just not played well in this game. And yet, his team is getting ready to win a championship. Simmons hits a three. That's a sign of maturation. If your best player, who's a guy who's the player of the year in the conference, averages 20 a game, is having a subpar performance, can you still play well? Well, the answer is undoubtedly yes. He's two for eight with four fouls and four turnovers. That three goes down. Clayton Henry has played well. Just hit his third three tonight. Simmons, another one. Off back iron. McCants grabs a rebound. McKinney, <laughs> who's trying to hit Rice, he hit a lock standing on the bench. Coach Shans gave the ultimate two hands down, said, son, what are you doing? <laughs> Sometimes you watch play like that, you wonder if Jabari Rice thought that a lock was actually his teammate <laughs> on the floor. But really, for the first time tonight, we're seeing a team with fresh legs versus a team with really tired legs. Yeah. This is Abilene Christian's fourth game in four days. It's an exhausting tournament. If you don't get that double by New Mexico State, you know, they're seated in the protected bracket to where they're automatically in the semifinals. This is just their second game. And it's not like Abilene Christian has played the bottom of the bracket. They had to beat number three and number two to get to the championship. Teddy Allen fouled out, just celebrated going to the bench. And the Aggies fans are chanting his name like he had another 40-point night. Well, he's had a great year. And they've showed out here, but the crowd has been fantastic for New Mexico State all tournament long. They've been loud. They've been really fun. Morris at the free throw line. He's got 12. Mason has 12. For Abilene Christian, trying for another underdog story, looking for a third straight bid to the NCAA tournament. And it looks like they're going to fall short tonight. It won't be without a fight, though. This is a pesky, pesky, gritty, and tough-minded Wildcats team. Rice down the lane, and they'll call a charge. Another charge drawn by the Wildcats. And another one by Reggie Miller. They feel like he draws two or three charges a game. I don't know if NBA Hall of Famer drew Reggie Miller drew two or three charges in his career. <laughs> he was better at some other things, though, than this Reggie Miller, and better at some other things than most players in the history of the game. <laughs> no question. Simmons got fouled. Like when you think of teams in the NCAA tournament, of who you don't want to match up with. You know, going back to that previous conversation, the Aggies are one of those teams. You talked about the size. You talked about they've got a star, right? a, a player like Teddy Allen who could become one of those stars in the NCAA tournament, could easily go off for 25-30 a game. But Dave, they play so hard that they're never truly out of a game. They can switch up defenses. They can go full court press. They've, they've got that 1-3-1 one, one extended half-court defense that is very different. If you haven't played against a 1-3-1 one, one extended half-court defense in the half-court, you've seen it for the first time, it can be really frustrating to manipulate. This is a dangerous team. This is a good team. This is a talented team. And it's a deep team. And they've come close. New Mexico State in the NCAA tournament. They haven't had a win in a while, but they've had some real close calls. Playing keep away here, where if seconds tick away, it's the best case scenario for them. Rice down low, McCants, no, tips it up, no, tipped it in. That's Johnny McCants. Extra, extra effort every single time he steps on the floor. And the fans of New Mexico State, they can feel it. And the celebration has begun. Bodies all over the place. I mean, that's kind of been the game it's it's been.
I think one of the most impressive things about this Aggies team is when Teddy Allen is not scoring well. I have loved the combination of play between McNair and McCants, the front court. Not only were they looking for each other, they were big time on the glass. They both had multiple blocks. And they moved well without the basketball on the offensive end. And defensively, if they weren't coming up with a steal, you saw McNair getting switched out and having to guard a, a, a backcourt player like Reggie Miller one-on-one -on -one and moved his feet, play hard without fouling. The front court, to me, for New Mexico State, they're the MVP of this championship game. Rice gets a big hug from his coach. McCants got a huge ovation coming out of the game. Final minute here in Las Vegas. The last win for the WAC in the NCAA tournament was Trent Johnson's Nevada team back in. And maybe that was Mark Fox's Nevada team that got a win after Trent Johnson. But Nevada, the last team back in 2007. New Mexico State played Auburn. The year Auburn went to the Final Four a couple years ago and lost by a point in the first round. That was a Final Four team. Three no good for the big man. Final seconds of the game here. And some hustle plays is not going to matter. Now the Aggies can celebrate. New Mexico State wins the whack and goes back to the NCAA tournament. Big time, gutty performance by the Aggies when Teddy Allen didn't play his best game. Emotions were high. It was gritty, it was physical. But New Mexico State, they were the better team on both ends of the floor. And a well-deserved ticket punched to the NCAA tournament for the New Mexico State Aggies. I mean, it's a, it's a proud program. It's a program that's had a lot of success over the last decade and going back even farther than that. But the last thing to accomplish for this program is to get an upset win in that first round in advance in the NCAA tournament. Do you think they could do it? Because they have Teddy Allen. This might, because of Teddy Allen, this might be the most talented team that Coach Chris Jans has had in New Mexico State. Maybe not the deepest, but I think they're the most talented. And you make that combination of Teddy Allen, that big time front court, and a really smart backcourt. This is absolutely a team that might have a little Cinderella in them. Good year in the WAC. All those 20 plus win teams, the newcomers who made an impact, including Abilene Christian, but in the end, the team that has dominated this league is cutting down the nets here in Vegas. The Aggies deserve it. It's a beautiful moment when you punch your ticket to the big dance. That's what you live for, that's what you dream about. Great job by the Aggies. Yeah, congratulations to New Mexico State, your 2022 WAC tournament champions going to the NCAA tournament. For our crew, for Mike O'Donnell, Dave Fleming saying good night from Las Vegas.